Hello everyone, uh, Glenn Wittenberg here. Just a quick video. Um, finally got all my uh, cables in for my 10 gig little home lab network. Um, I think the prior video I had with this kind of explains it all, how I use direct attached cables uh, between uh, three machines. Each machine has a dual port uh, 10 gig uh, CNA, converged network adapter in it. And uh, so I'm using uh, three different networks to communicate with all three different machines on here. And it's working out pretty good. It's doing everything that I wanted it to do. So I uh, just kind of wanted to show you a, a couple things here for SpeedWise. Um, this window that I have open here is actually on my uh, network attached storage uh, server, my NAS. And I have a ZFS pool on here. You can see I'm showing the ZF pool status on that. Um, I call the pole my raid, and um, what I have in here now is uh, six three terabyte uh, Western Digital red drives in here. I'm going to add two more uh, probably in the next week or so. Um, uh, but this is all I had now, so I figured I'd play with it, right? Um, so what I've done is I've mirrored um, two drives each, right? So I have three mirrored uh, pairs in here. So pair one is SD. D and C, and then D and E is another one for my second mirror. And then my third mirror is F and G. You can see here it goes 0, 1, 2 instead of 1, 2, 3. But there's my three mirrors there. And then I've striped all three mirrors. So it's called a striped mirror, not a mirrored stripe. Uh, this allows for better fault tolerance. Um, there is no you know, speed increase or drive capacity increase, decrease going either way. Uh, they're all the same there. Uh, but you do gain uh, better tolerance uh, when you do the striped mirrors uh, with the more drives that you add. So here eventually I'll have another a pair of mirrors down here. Um, this will be called mirror three, which is actually the fourth set. And then I'll stripe uh, all of those as well. So I'll have a bigger, uh, you know, uh, three more terabyte of space out of the six terabyte of drives that I'll have. So, um, and it's not that I need the space. Um, I just want the speed, right? <laughs> so, um, let me go ahead and minimize this. Um, up here, this window here is, again, uh, both these windows are just putty windows, and they're on my NAS. And this is uh, HTOP here, which is just showing some CPU utilization, uh, some memory utilization. You can see I have a, a 64 gig of RAM uh, in here, and it's recognizing 62.5 gig, uh, you know, the OS level is. Um, and this is a i5, uh, 6600K on a super micro z170 oce board um, and i have uh, corsair uh, lpx a 64 gig ddr4 kit in here as well so and i'm not overclocking or anything um it just you know was a was a good buy value and a lot of performance on the board um i'm kind of a fan of super micro so i went that route um and again i have the uh six uh, wd uh, red NAS three terabyte drives in there um, with three mirrored uh, sets, and then I'm striping all those as well for my ZFS pool. Um, the operating system and stuff for my NAS is uh, housed in the uh, Samsung 128 gig uh, Pro SSD uh, 850 Evo, I think it is uh, by Samsung. So uh, pretty, pretty snappy there. Um, so down here again, uh, putty window into my NAS, and this is called a uh, I.O. top, a little utility, and it's going to show me my disk reads and writes on here, right? So anything that comes in and out of here, it's going to go ahead and register, you know, what my actual and total disk reads and writes are out of here. So over here is my SMB uh, to my NAS, uh, and you can see that the uh, address I'm using is 192.168.80.100. That's out of my 10 gig, one of my ports on my 10 gig card into my NAS. Uh, so that's just, this is a, a 10 gigabit a network connection into my NAS right here with uh, SMB Samba uh, on it. And then what I have here is called the uh, test file, and it is a 10, uh, 10 gig file that I used. That's just the uh, kind of uh, pieces of some uh, ISOs I put together to equal 10 gig. And then it's kind of a zip file. I just renamed it and stuff. So it's just kind of a zip file of that. So um, it's, you know, not compressible, so I'm not going to get any, you know, compression 
uh, out of it or anything. I have compression enabled on my ZFS pool, which allows for you know a little better I/O here and there. If it's a compressible file, uh, this file is really not. So um, I won't, that won't be a factor in there at all. So um, let's go ahead and drag this over. So it's on my desktop, on my PC, which is a uh, another i5 6600K with only 16 gig uh, Corsair LPX uh, DDR4 RAM in it. And this is running on a uh, 512 uh, gigabyte uh, Samsung SSD Pro 8, 850 Evo at the end, I think it is. Um, so you know, I've got some disk I.O. over here. So let's drag it over to the NAS, and we'll take a look. Let's go to replace the file. You can see here I'm getting a little over 400, and uh, this is kind of showing the same, 427, 432, kind of bouncing around. And my CPU, I'm not even using, you know, 25% of one core on here, so uh, not a lot of utilization on that. But that's pretty fast, dragging this across the wire, 10 gig file, uh, getting over 400 uh, uh, megs uh, a second on that, and that's uh, megabytes, not megabits. So uh, you know, it's pretty darn fast. And so if I drag it off my NAS onto my desktop, it's a little slower. Not sure why the reads would be slower on that, but. You can see here it's going to come in about 350 or so um, on the chart here. I got a little bit less utilization uh, on my cores, and now you can see the disk read is reading off of the, uh, the ZFS pool, and uh, it's reading 360, uh, uh, 326, 352, which is about in line with what we have here. So not too bad. I'm getting uh, you know 350 on the uh, reads, and I'm getting over 400s on the writes uh, to my ZFS pool. And uh, probably a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, all the memory that I have in here and, uh, you know, using uh, SSD drive for my, uh, uh, for my swap and whatnot, too. So uh, got it running pretty smooth over there. So maybe here in the next clip, um, I have an ESXi box that I also have plugged in here that I have my other port on my 10 gig card on my PC going to it. Um, so I can manage and you know drop drop and drag ISOs and whatnot uh, up to my ESXi uh, fairly rapidly, and um, I also have the other port on that ESXi going into the NAS too, and then I have my uh, ZFS pool mounted via NFS share to my uh, ESXi box, right? So I can run all my virtual guest images off of that, off this new uh, storage that I have here, my ZFS pool uh, across a 10 gig wire, so. Again, uh, disk I.O. is being my bottleneck here, uh, not network. So uh, uh, that's kind of cool, too. So uh, should be back here in a minute. Thanks. Okay. So what we're looking at here now is my vSphere client on my PC uh, connected into my uh, ESXi. I've already logged in. And I've done that over my 10 gig network of 192.168.70.90. Again, that's one of the ports on my PC uh, uh, converged network adapter with the direct attached cable directly into there so I got no switches or anything in between. And uh, so my PC is 192.168.70.5 and my vSphere uh, or my ESXi server is .90. So let's go to here and I just want to show you kind of a Windows 10 load on this. So let's go back over here real quick. Sorry about that. Let's go to uh, configuration. I think we're on uh, here we go. Uh, my ZFS pool um, I have with an NFS share uh, over to I think won't drag. What do you know? I know that well. It's a Z, it's an NFS mount. You can see here it's NFS to my NAS of 192.168.90. So I've got one card with two ports in a CSXI. One is the 192.168.70 network, and the other one is the 192.168.90. So the .90 I use to connect to my NAS and the dot seventy I use to connect to my PC. So I can, you know, upload ISOs and whatnot to my uh I have a local hard drive up here. It's just a five hundred gig Western Digital Blue. It's actually a physical drive in the ESXI. I can load files onto that. I can also run guest images on these other ones. I've got three five hundred gig drives in there just to kind of play with. Um but then I have this uh you know I've got what eight eight terabytes of storage available to me. Uh, through this NFS mount to my ZFS pool uh, over the 10 gig network. So that's where I kind of do most of my image, uh, store my images and run them off of there. And then I have this device here, my uh, my Win 10 2001. Let's go back here real quick. 
let's browse this. Oops. And uh, you can see there's my uh, uh, Win10 underscore 2001. I have some uh, other images in here. I use as templates so I can quickly deploy on uh, kind of some base config so I don't have to do just fresh installs off of. So it works kind of nice. But you can see here on my ZFS pool um, over the 10 gig network, um, I have this image, you know, Windows 10. Um, there's all the files in there. Windows 10 underscore 201. That means I'm using the uh, last octet of the address of 201. And again, each of my images up here all have multi-network interfaces, uh, interfaces using the 10 gig, and then interfaces using the 1 gig as well. So uh, that kind of makes it easy to identify. So let's go ahead and launch this, and we'll see how long it takes, right? So let's go power on, and let's go ahead and open up a console to that. And you can see it's already uh, booting up, and I'm already at a login screen. So that's uh, not too bad. A lot of people uh, can't even load Windows 10 that fast on their local machines. Uh, I'm doing this off of my uh, NAS across a 10 gig wire. So I expect my speed to uh, improve. Yeah, let's go uh, center. I expect my speed to improve in this uh, when I add another um, add another two drives in there. So I make another uh, VDEV. Um, well, I guess I don't have any network hooked up now. Whoop, my bad. I guess we'll have to fix that, huh? Let's take a look. Why isn't this hooked up? Oh, I probably have my V switch down. Sorry, I've been playing around on this a lot. So, uh, any case, but uh, there's the load. Uh, it only took a couple seconds to boot up, so I'm pretty happy with that performance. Thanks.